Order. Order. The next item on the order paper is a legislative consent motion for the business and planning bill. I'll ask the clerk to read the motion. That this assembly endorses the principle of the inclusion in the business and planning bill of provision for temporary reduction in the duration of certain Northern Ireland driving licences. Thank you. I call the Minister for Infrastructure, Mrs Nicola Mallon, to move the motion. Minister. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I beg to move. Thank you. The Business Committee has agreed that there should be no time limit on this debate. I call the Minister to open the debate on the motion. Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, at the outset, I want to acknowledge the fact that it has not been possible to adhere to normal assembly time scales in progressing this legislative consent motion. This reflects the fact that the Business and Planning Bill is being fast-tracked through its legislative passage. The bill was only introduced to Westminster on the 25th of June and completed its common stages in a single day, the 29th of June. It is currently in the House of Lords and is expected to become law later this month. It is this fast-tracking process that has necessitated the very short timeline leading up to today's debate. I regret the need to shorten normal assembly timescales on this occasion, and I am very grateful to my executive colleagues for reviewing my executive paper at very short notice and agreeing to this LCM. I am also grateful to this assembly, the Department for Infrastructure Scrutiny Committee, and committee officials for their urgent consideration and processing of the LCM. As members will be aware, this legislative consent motion relates to a specific driver licensing clause, Clause 15, which is included in the Westminster Business and Planning Bill. The Business and Planning Bill contains a range of measures that are designed to support the transition from crisis response into recovery from COVID-19. Many of its measures relate only to England and Wales or to England alone. I will now turn, Mr Deputy Principal Speaker, to Clause 15 of the Bill, which makes provision for the temporary reduction in the duration of certain driving licences and is specific to Northern Ireland. Clause 15 makes short-term statutory provision that would enable my department, if required, to issue one-year licences to certain bus and lorry drivers. I want to very briefly outline the policy background. Full licences for these drivers, known as Group 2 driving licences, normally last for five years. However, first-time applicants, drivers who are aged 45 or over, or drivers who declare any medical conditions on their application form, normally require a prior medical assessment. That is current policy. The outcome of that assessment determines whether applicants receive a full five-year licence a licence of restricted duration, or indeed have their licence application refused. During the current crisis, it has often been difficult for drivers to get appointments for medical assessments. In response, I have worked with the Department of Health and the British Medical Association to ask GPs to prioritise medical appointments. And in turn, my department has prioritised licence applications from key workers. More recently, the EU Emergency Transport Regulation has provided for the extended validity of existing licences. Effectively, driving licences expiring during this time are extended for seven months beyond the expiry date that appears on the face of the licence. This has been very helpful in ensuring that drivers can remain on the roads at this time. All of this perhaps begs the question, do we need a new power that would allow us to issue one-year licences? The honest answer to that is that I don't know. None of us can predict with any certainty what the future holds. To date, these other measures have been sufficient. However, I believe, particularly given the impact on critical supply chains, that it is prudent to keep other options open and have a further contingency plan if needed. The EU Emergency Transport Regulation is a short-term measure that expires at the end of August. While there is provision for a further extension of up to six months, this requires an application to the EU Commission, and there is no guarantee that such an application would be granted. I therefore believe that we should take this opportunity to legislate for one-year licences, 
short-term licences that can be issued without a prior medical assessment in the event that they may be needed in the future. I want to very briefly summarise what the clause would allow my department to do. It contains discretionary provision that would allow one-year licences to be issued to drivers aged 45 and over in circumstances where my department decides to waive the normal requirement for a medical report. The clause is drafted so as to manage any road safety risk. This is the thinking behind restricting the licence to one year and the provision that a one-year licence cannot be renewed for a further year. Also, I do not propose to issue one-year licences to any first-time applicants. I believe it is important that drivers should be medically assessed before being granted a first licence to drive a bus or lorry. In practice, my department would only waive the medical report requirement in circumstances where drivers are aged 45 or over, are applying for a licence renewal and do not declare a medical condition that prevents them from driving safely. I should also point out that these licences can only be granted during the period commencing at 1 August 2020 and ending at 24 March 2022. Effectively, this is a sunset provision. In practice, however, normal licensing arrangements will be restored as soon as it is practical to do so. Finally, since driver licensing is a devolved matter, I did consider whether we could bring a bill through the Assembly to legislate for one-year licences. On principle, I believe all devolved matters should be legislated for in the Assembly, and I will always endeavour to make legal changes through the Assembly where possible. In this instance, however, legal advice indicated that in order to avoid the risk of legal challenge, the best approach would be to include the necessary provision for one-year licensing in Westminster legislation. In summary, DVA is working to restore normal licensing arrangements as quickly as possible. However, I believe that it is appropriate to take powers that would permit the issue of one-year licences without prior medical assessments as a further mitigation should this prove necessary. I would, of course, think carefully before using this power. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I commend this motion to the Assembly and ask that it endorses the inclusion of this bill, of this clause, in the Business and Planning Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. The first person I have on my speaking list is the Chair of the Infrastructure Committee, Ms Michelle McElveen. Thank you, Mr Principal, Deputy Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to speak as Chairman of the Committee for Infrastructure on today's Legislative Consent Motion to temporarily enable one-year driver licence renewals for lorry and bus drivers. In recent months during the COVID-19 crisis, the Committee for Infrastructure has considered its impact on a range of individuals and organisations. The Committee has worked with the Minister and her department, both supporting and challenging her in making the required mitigations for those most affected by the lockdown. The matter of driving, driver licence renewals for Group 2 drivers in need of a medical certificate to continue driving and to enable them to work is just one of many issues that has been impacted by this pandemic and which needs a quick and effective response to remedy. The current COVID-19 crisis has meant that drivers who require a medical assessment are having difficulty in gaining access to a medical professional. This has been an issue in the rest of the United Kingdom and a solution has been found. Therefore, when the Minister wrote to the Committee for Infrastructure on the 17th of June, advising that she had decided to take immediate action through this legislative consent motion before us today, the Committee agreed to support her. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, although very little time was afforded to the Committee for its consideration, the Committee made every effort to scrutinise the motion and to report on it for this debate today. The Committee for Infrastructure considered the intention for this LCM by correspondence to ensure members were well informed of its content ahead of consideration at committee and to allow the committee to agree a written report. As the Minister has already outlined, the relevant clause of the Business and Planning Bill, Clause 15, would enable driver licences lasting one year to be granted to drivers aged 45 to 65 without them sending in a medical report with their licence applications. These drivers would usually be able to get a five-year licence or a licence lasting until their 66th birthday, if shorter, but because of restrictions on access to medical practitioners as a result of COVID-19, 
they can't obtain the required medical report. In its consideration, the Committee for Infrastructure sought clarification on a number of issues prior to giving its consent. A copy of the issues raised and the answers received from the Department can be found at Appendix 5 of the Committee's LCM report. The LCM was formally considered by the Committee at its meeting on the 1st of July 2020. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, the Committee for Infrastructure is content with the legislative consent motion before us today. Thank you. Thank you. I call Mr Cathal Boylan. Well, good to previous last can call you, and I certainly welcome the motion as well and thank the Minister for work on it. Um, one of the facts of COVID-19 is that drivers who need a medical assessment for their driving licence are having difficulty in accessing medical professional to fulfil this requirement. This is particularly a fact in lorry and bus drivers who are classified as key workers and have been playing a key role during the pandemic. And I want to just put it on record the work, acknowledge the work of the key workers and has been talked about in committee, the role that they have played over this period. Lorry drivers have been making sure supply chains remain open during this period of uncertainty while bus drivers continue to provide key service and facilitating essential connectivity, such as allowing other key workers to get to work and letting people fulfil essential journeys. The Department for Infrastructure has extended licences by using the EU Emergency Transport Regulation, which became law with effect from the 4th of June. This has allowed driving licences which expire or are due to expire between February and August to be extended for a period of seven months. This provision is a temporary provision, though there is scope, scope to request to the European Commission for an extension. However, as an extension is not guaranteed, this business and planning bill will allow a discretionary provision that would enable the Department to issue one-year licences, provided certain conditions are satisfied. I agree with the Department's assessment that it is prudent to ensure that the option of issuing one-year licence renewals to key workers should be available. Thus, I welcome the measure on the basis that this was a significant issue for the transport and freight sector over the pandemic, and that this bill gives the Department the statutory provision in the meantime. Any decision to go ahead and grant the extension in the North will ultimately come down to the Department for Infrastructure. On this, I would like to ask the Minister whether an extension has also been requested from the European Commission and whether we could have an update on that front. And furthermore, if the Minister could provide assurances to the members that road safety will not be compromised by this measure, I support the motion. Thank you. I call Mr Roy Beggs. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I rise to indicate my support for this legislative consent motion. Um, it is vital that we ensure that we do have uh, drivers able to work and carry out their key roles uh, in our community uh, in the months that are ahead. Um, the Clause 15, has been, as has been indicated by the Minister, um, enables uh, the, well, and ultimately empower the Minister to give extension to licences. And there is a particular problem, and there has, a, there has been a problem, and I have seen the problem from drivers who have contacted me over the past number of months. Um, if a driver is required to have a, a medical assessment in order to renew their licence, there has been difficulty in accessing, G, accessing GPs who have actually obviously been stressed and ha, had a very heavy workload over the past few months. And it is important that we ensure that uh, there are no delays whilst uh, drivers may be being prioritised. Uh, it is seen to be a reasonable uh, period to extend for one year. There is a risk if we do not extend in that perhaps essential key workers will not be able to drive, food supplies may not be able to be delivered, buses may not be able to be driven. And there is also a, a, a calculated risk that uh, something could go wrong if someone was driving. Uh, and a medical condition materialises. But that has been assessed as being uh, a limited risk, and we all have to make choices. Uh, and I certainly would view there being a much greater risk if we do not get food delivered to our homes and we do not have transport arrangements in place. A uh, key worker who was in touch with me was uh, an oil delivery driver. Now, it's not, it's, not a, it's not easy just to lift the phone and get a driver who is experienced in delivering oil. We all think it's just a driver, but there are uh, health and safety requirements, specialist training often involved in many of the duties that our uh, heavy goods vehicle drivers carry out. 
So it is vital that we do not leave gaps in the services that are provided. I certainly view a one-year period uh, of an extension as being reasonable, an extension, uh, and a, a reasonable extension, and would support uh, that this uh, uh, legislative consent motion would be approved in order to protect our community. I support the motion. Thank you. I call Mr. Andrew Muir. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for bringing the motion before the House here today. I would declare at the outset that I was previously an employee of TransLink. Uh, my party and I will be supporting this motion. Um, lorry and bus drivers are uh, key workers, and I would like to once again formally put on the record my sincere gratitude to them and to all our transport workers who have worked throughout this crisis to keep food and medical supplies on our shelves. We do not know how the pandemic will look on the 31st of August when the current seven-month extension ceases to apply, and sincerely hope that the number of COVID-19 cases will have continued to decrease and we will be able to move along the road to recovery. But we cannot know that for sure, as events across the world uh, have been reported in recent days. And it may be difficult for drivers to get the medical assessments they require. That is why this motion is prudent and gives the Department of Infrastructure the ability to issue one-year extensions where appropriate. However, it is also appropriate for the Department to lay out the specifics as to how whether it will judge whether a medical assessment is feasible or not. The requirement for these medical assessments exists for very good reason. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, we must ensure that exemptions are only permitted where they are not feasible. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, I beg to support the motion. Thank you. Thank you. As no other member has indicated to me that they wish to speak on this matter, I invite the Minister to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Minister. Um, thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. And I want to thank the Chair, the Vice Chair uh, and all of the members uh, on the committee for their support and for the urgency that they gave this matter, given the speed of this legislation moving through Westminster. Um, I want to uh, join in adding my voice to that of all of the members who have spoken in putting on record my appreciation for the critical role that our lorry and bus drivers play, uh, particularly during this crisis, as they have worked hard to ensure that we can keep critical supply chains uh, open. Um, uh, members are right, Mr Boylan referenced it uh, and Mr Beggs, about the difficulty that a number of drivers, lorry drivers and bus drivers have had in trying to get medical uh, assessments. That is why my department worked in partnership with the Department of Health and with the British Medical Association uh, and GPs uh, to try to put a framework in place to ensure the prioritisation of medical appointments and assessments for essential workers. Uh, following that, we also moved to uh, tie in with the European Union regulation, uh, which has granted a seven-month extension to all licences. Uh, and as members have rightly referenced, um, this will run from September, the 1st of September, through to the end uh, of August. This is a, a practical solution, and Mr Boylan asked um, whether we are seeking a further extension of that. Um, we are keeping that option open. That request would have to come from the Department for Transport, um, but we are continuously working with them and keeping abreast of the, of the situation. But as Mr Moore pointed out, um, we don't know where we're going to be in six or seven months' time. We can look to see what is happening in Leicester. We can look to see what is happening in Australia, where we have seen an increase in the spread of the virus and localised lockdown. Um, that's why I'm taking um, which I believe is a, a sensible and reasonable and prudent approach to have a further mitigation measure uh, on the shelf in terms of the one year uh, licence extension so that we can use that um, if required. I want to add my voice to Mr Beggs uh, and to the others who have spoken in saying that this is very much about balancing uh, risk. Uh, this is what I very much do in this job on a daily basis, particularly in this area. And this was very much about having a prudent, sensible approach, an additional belt and braces approach, but it's also about balancing up uh, the road safety. And Mr Beggs is absolutely right. Part of that consideration is road safety, but also ensuring that we can maintain uh, critical supply chains and get the essential goods and services to shops and to homes uh, that we very much need. I would like to reassure um, Mr Moore in terms of uh, that road safety assessment that the one-year um, extension, if I do choose to go down that path, 
will only be issued to renewal applications, not first-time applicants, and it will be issued to those over the ages of 45 who do not have a medical uh, condition to declare in terms of road safety. Uh, so in concluding, um, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I want to again put on record my appreciation for the committee uh, for their diligence and efficiency in dealing with this matter, for their support and their challenge. Uh, as the Chair very aptly uh, put it, that's a very important part of our scrutiny process and our democratic uh, accountability and system. And so in concluding, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I would ask that the Assembly endorse the inclusion of this clause in the Business and Planning Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. The question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, if any. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The next item of business is a motion from the Committee for Infrastructure on concerns over COVID-19 guidance and financial support to industry sectors.